Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180 for the best in Saturday Talk Radio at 1 o'clock, and on 1230 KGEO at 10 o'clock Saturday, and for the best in Wednesday Talk Radio on 1410 KERI on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Your host is Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay, and behind the big board, our producer, Greg Held. Hey, Clay, that was a great show last week with Jeremy and Wesley and with uh, Eric Blame talking about C- SEAL Team 6. Yeah, the Marines, the Army, and the Navy. You bet. Wait, Next, I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> From the halls of Montezuma? <laughs> when I sing in the shower, the water stops, so it's yeah. not a good idea. <laughs> I know. When you play golf, they, you yell, incoming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remember that line, huh? <laughs> Next week, we have a surprise for you that I can't disclose yet, but it should be a pretty good show. But today in the second half, we have Professor Frederick Harris talking about a fascinating new book, The Price of the Ticket, Obama and the Rise and Decline of Black Politics. But in studio for the first half of the program, we have Kevin Burton, president of the San Joaquin Community Hospital Foundation. Kevin, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Hey, thank you, uh, Marty. (laughs) Marty? Marty and... Marty and Clay. <laughs> Kevin, yeah. Why do you think you're here, Kevin? <laughs> Actually, that's oh, a good point, well, Kevin. Well, well, you're behind the mic. I couldn't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> if you can't see me, you're blind. <laughs> I can say. You know, exaggerating isn't bad, Kevin, but... <laughs> Is it the old mouse and the elephant story? <laughs> uh, cataracts, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that what you drove in? <laughs> I got my Cadillac. You know, I'm I want to tell an old story. You know, we didn't tell it last week with the uh, Marine here, but a while back we told the story. But why don't you hit a Marine in the nose, Marty? Now this because you might <laughs> break his finger. <laughs> Now, l- last month we had General Boykin on, <laughs> and, and he and <laughs> it's a joke he told us. <laughs> Since the two of them are Army and I'm a Marine, I got the blunt of the joke. So. Oh, Ouch. <laughs> literally. So, Kevin, you're president. Wow, big title, big job, big responsibility. What do you do? You know, right. Uh, what I do as president of the Foundation for San Joaquin Community Hospital is uh, we oversee all the philanthropic dollars that come through the hospital. So all the fundraisers that come through the Grossman Burn Center, uh, in particular, was a uh, solely funded by the community, uh, about 1.3 million dollars. Um, right now, we are currently in a uh, campaign to bring the the first uh, comprehensive hospital-based cancer center to our community. Uh, and that's a, be- a beautiful cancer center that's being built right across the street from our campus. You know, I was going to ask you about that Grothman Burn Center. I, I used to have an office in Sherman Oaks about two blocks away from that burn center down there. And it, it was amazing the people they would bring in there and do all that reconstructive work and, and bring them back to normal. Is that the kind of thing we're going to be doing here at the Grossman Center? Yeah, the Grossman Burn Center is identical to what they do down in the, the, the now it's in West Hills now. They, get, mm-hmm. they, they move from Sherman Oaks. But it's, I, it's the same uh, practice, plastic surgery base. Uh, the physicians that work for our Grossman Burn Center, Dr. Brandon Freeman, who is the chief of the Grossman Burn Center here, is from Bakersfield. They are uh, employed by Grossman Burn Center, uh, and the staff that works there are all trained at the Grossman Burn Center level, but they work for San Joaquin Community Hospital. And uh, we have we take all kinds of burn cases that come through. And unfortunately, when it's full, it's full. When it's not, it's not. And unfortunately, it's it's full uh, today. And uh, But we see uh, from newborns uh, that may have had a burn if they're at home and they have scalding water or they're taking a bath for, an, uh, you know, for some uncircumstances they have uh, scalding water on them all the way up to um, you know to 90 year olds um, but uh, in, in, in every in between but we see about 48 um, percent in our burn center are children you know Kevin you've got some uh, local people that have stepped up and donated I think you have a, a room after Dan and Sally Panero, as an example. Yes, we do at at the Grossman Burn Center. Uh, uh, Dan and Sally Panero stepped up and uh, donated uh, some money uh, to to name the hydrotherapy room, and that's where our, that's where our patients have to go in, and, and they're what's called debridement. It's and that's where they have to go in, and they have uh, the that skin removed. Uh, it's a it's a a, a wonderful uh, facility, a state of the art. Uh, and we've had a number of uh, donors come forward and donate to that uh, 
to that Gross and Burn Center, and uh, we wouldn't be here without them. And uh, ERA, uh, we have the ERA Outpatient Clinic. Uh, Oxy Petroleum has donated graciously, and then we have also the Chevron Fund, uh, which was um, designed by Chevron for to be used for children, children who have been burned and who may not have the means for uh, medical insurance or in coverage. Uh, during their stay and after their stay, and it's unfortunately it's used quite often. And you'll take uh, donations from anybody; it doesn't have to be a big corporation or a union. And I don't—I didn't hear you mention any unions, by the way, that made a donation. But uh, you'll <laughs> you'll take donations from individuals as well, won't you? Oh yes, we do, and and we take. In fact, uh, it's it's not uncommon that every month we see a check that will come in uh, from the um, uh, from the community, um, and we have people that that obviously. Um, have a care and a need to, to, to want to, to give. And so, you know, if you would like to give to the Grossman Burn Center, um, you know, contact the San Joaquin Community Hospital Foundation at 869-6570. Our in-studio guest, Kevin Burton, president of the San Joaquin Community Hospital Foundation. I've got another comment to make on that burn center. <clears throat> I remember in Sherman Oaks, unfortunately, you, you'd hear almost every other week, and, you know, at that time the center was about... Oh, I, I'm going to say a mile away from the beginning of Beverly Hills and that area down in there. And the one call I'd hear all the time was somebody freebasing or some some bizarre thing like that and the thing blowing up on them. And next thing you know, they end up in the burn center. You're shaking your head, Kevin. <laughs> you know what? Um, I've heard that here in Kern County. We really? will we will have people and this i don't know if it's the free base but we get these ones who put together these little meth labs kitchen labs and we will get ones that'll come in through burns and i that uh, i was told by uh, our plastic surgeon that we do get them in but obviously you know their their um answer to the questions don't relate to what really went on it's you know maybe i was over the radiator and a radiator burst or i was barbecuing but right. i think we pretty much know what went on and and unfortunately we do get those in um mm-hmm. but you know now with the summertime we um we'll we'll get a lot of uh, we get children that have flown in from um accidents with barbecues pits over at the coastal area we had some last year that were flown in and and then this is really the time too where you start seeing uh steam burns from people open up their radiators you know, on the side of the freeway and not monitoring it, letting it just kind of breathe. But, uh, you know, we've had some uh, also the barbecue burns as well. Thanksgiving, when people do their deep fried turkeys, I'll bet you get some of those. Deep fried turkeys. Those are some uh, stupid turkeys, it's, it's, aren't I think, they? I think that's uh, <laughs> pretty common. We're, we're, we're at least going to see one of those in November. You know, you talked about freebasing, and I don't know if you remember, but uh, years ago, Marty will remember this because he goes back a lot of years. <laughs> but uh, Ricky Nelson had a had, was freebasing in an airplane. Ricky Nelson, the singer, freebasing uh-huh. in an airplane, and the airplane crashed, and they were he was killed, and I think several members, members of his band were killed. Yeah, right, I, Marty. I, I remember yeah. that. I think you remember that, don't you? Ricky Nelson. Yeah, right. uh, didn't sorry, you were before that. Um, the four four preps for you. Didn't didn't he go to a garden party or something? And yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell me a little bit about that cancer center. I was fascinated by the information you mailed out on. on that. You know the 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 cancer center. This um, this cancer center is going to be one of a kind. It's we want this to be a destination for cancer care. We um, have built a we're building a sixty thousand square foot cancer center. Uh, the, the cancer center is being it's comprehensive it will have a radiation oncology on the bottom floor uh, the second floor is going to be medical oncology for infusions uh, the fourth floor is going to be an outpatient surgery center so we're going to have four running ORs and it will be a it'll be a place for all your screening diagnosis and treatment underneath one roof that does not happen here we have that in one facility now at San Joaquin Community Hospital so you won't have to leave plus that also eliminates that that time for the testing and not knowing what's what your diagnosis is sometimes people have to wait a week two three weeks here it's sh- it's, it's cut very short and we should have that within a uh, a short a very short period of time of what hopefully uh, the diagnosis is and we're hoping it's not cancer yeah, I, I just had that experience with a with a prostate biopsy where 
it took ages to find out, you know, to get the things set up and then ages to yeah. find out whether or not, you know, there was a problem. So you're saying this is going to eliminate that kind of thing? This is, this is going to help expedite uh, diagnosis on patients when I come through this, this cancer center. You know, people don't realize, but one out of every five of our community members are leaving town for cancer care. Those, wow. those needs are not being met, and that's 20% of our community. And so what we want to do is we want to capture that. And one of the reasons to capture that is tying into an affiliation uni- university-based cancer center. Mm-hmm. So right now, uh, we tied into, as a consultant, the best cancer care in the world, and that's MD Anderson and the University of Texas. They are ranked number one uh, in cancer care and cancer research. They've helped de- design build that cancer center for us uh they've actually it's it's a model of what their cancer center would look like in the university of texas they're helping us with the policies procedures and they're also helping us hire the best physicians for that cancer center right let's pick up there when we come back okay we'll be back in a moment on taking care of business on current radio news talk 1180